היי, זה איזה רן סטרן, עם פארט 2 של האקספלוריישן של ה-RG-WORP פילטרס. בפארט 1 אני אראה לכם את הרפלקשן אפקט, ועכשיו אנחנו נראה את הקומפניון, שזה ה-RG-שאדו. אפשר להגיד שזה ה-3D שאדו אפקט. אבל לפני זה, בואו נראה את הרפלקשן של הרפלקשן של הרפלקשן של הרפלקשן. We'll catch up from the place I left off last time and continue to work on the same comp. So here is our comp, the reflection girl. And in order to demonstrate the RG shadow, I will shut down the eye for this layer and create a new one. So let's just create a simple text. I will highlight the text tool, place my cursor in the middle of the screen, and let's just write down wow explanation point. Okay, so this is our text, and of course, wow is because this girl is so happy, so I think we should say wow to her. And now I want to try to imitate a 3D shadow to this text. So of course I can duplicate it and using the same method I showed you before, but let's again try to see what After Effects has in stock for us. So first, let's go to the effects and presets. And let's just type down shadow. So basically we have the perspective category which holds two effects, the drop shadow and the radial shadow. And of course you can see the RG shadow but we will leave this one for later. So first let's try the drop shadow effect. So double click in order to apply it. And this is a 2D effect which means we can change of course the opacity, we can change the direction, the distance. and all the other things that you probably know, but it doesn't really look like the shadow is sitting underneath our letters. So we will say goodbye to this one and maybe try our luck with the radial shadow one. And this filter is an advanced version of the drop shadow because it also responds to a light source. So for example, if I will change my light source, I can see that the drop shadow is actually projecting itself on the wall behind and you can of course change other stuff like softness and projection distance so you can maybe try to simulate it a little bit better but again it will not behave like a 3d shadow so we will delete it and my suggestion is to try to use the cc slant effect in conjunction with another filters so let's type down cc slant And let's double click to apply this effect. So the CC slant by itself doesn't do much, but if you set the color to something else and the default will be black, then you get a chance to slant your shadow and to change its height. So for example, if I'm going to do something like this and maybe slant it over here or over there, then we will be able to achieve a nice 3D look like the shadow is underneath our letters. So in order to see the letters, we have to bring them back into the mix. So let's use the same method as before. We will use the composite effect. So CC composite, then let's apply it. And of course you need to disable RGB only in order to use the alpha pixels. Now you can come back to the slant and just play with it, maybe change the direction of it. And of course you need to change the height in order for it to look like it is projecting on the floor. But once you go too far, it starts to crop your letters. So again, we can solve this very easily with the grow bound effect like we did before. So let's just drag it before everything and change the amount of pixels so we have more to work with. Now if you want you can also soften the shadow by applying a blur effect. So let's just try a fast blur this time. Again we will place the fast blur on top of the CC composite. So the CC composite will be the last filter that we will use. And basically we are there. So we've got ourselves a nice 3D shadow that looks like it's projected on the floor. So once again, you can save this as an animation preset and reuse it over and over again. But I want to show you the alternative, the use of the RG shadow effect, which does all of this and more in one plugin. So let's come back to the effects and presets, select all the effects and delete them. Now let's return to the effects and presets and type down RG SHA, which will 
I select the RG shadow and double click to apply it. And if you saw part one of this series, then you will identify all the 3D axes that we have here. So we have two for the floor. First, let's work with those and place our floor where it's supposed to be just underneath our letters. And now we have this height and slant, which is a slider that allows us to define where and how far the shadow will be in our scene. So I will say something like this, maybe a little bit higher. Now let's again close the bend because we don't need to use it. You can see that you can create your own shadow look using the alpha channel, the lightness, the luminance, or by using the red, green, or blue channels. I will stick with the alpha because the text has a nice alpha to work with. You can also change the opacity. Let's crank it a little bit higher, say around 80 or 82. Then there is a unique feature here which enables you to create a second color. So for example, if I will define a second color which is different from what I have here, say something which is more similar to the floor, let me just grab the pick whip and define something like this. I will create a gradient that will be from one color to the second one. And it will, again, make this shadow look like it belongs to the scene. So this is a nice feature that we have here. Also, we can change the softness. So let's just define something which will look a little bit blurriness than what we had before. And of course, you can change the softness type and the fade start and its length. For this example, I will play with the length and just make sure that we will see a little bit less of it so it will look like it's projected on the floor that's great and it's looking very nice and very realistic so we've got everything that we need and of course you've got all the other controllers you can actually add a little bit of grain fill to the scene so it will be integrated well in your composition then again you can choose a different random seed and play with the animation we don't need this one here so i'll reset it the only thing that i haven't touched yet is the motion blur and i promised that i will show you the motion blur with all its glory on the third part when it really helps using the corner pin effect so make sure to tune in in order to understand what this motion blur does. But for now, let's just close the RG shadow and return to the effects and preset. And let's add also the reflection to the same letters just because it's so easy and so fun. Now we need to change the order here. So the shadow should be after the reflection. Then select the reflection and then drag it to wherever you want it to be and of course you have to make it a little bit more accurate than what i'm doing now but i think that this will work for us very nicely so this will be our reflection to the letters let's open the reflection play with it very quickly we will change the opacity and maybe also change the fade length so it will be something which is a little bit more dissolve it like this and again you can also play with it like that until you get the look that you are after now let's bring back our lady to the screen and change the order of the layers so she will be on top of our letters we will select her and just make her i think somewhere over here let me just press the apostrophe key and call up the safe and title action so I know that she won't be trimmed and we can shut them off. And just because it was so easy, let's come back to the text and copy the RG shadow from it by selecting it and pressing Command or Control C. Select our girl and paste the shadow to the girl. And now let's just set up the floor to wherever we want it to be. Something I think like this set the shadow to be very very close to her legs and maybe change the order so we can see our reflection after the shadow and this just give this a very cool and realistic look so there you have it a very easy to use 3d shadow effect which saves a lot of work and hassle combined with the reflection 
which already gives us a very unique look. Let's hover on top of the composition window and move to full frame in order to view the final result. As you can see, by adding this filter, our two-dimensional scene gets a lot of depth and definition, and the render time is very quick because we didn't invoke any 3D lightning and camera moves. So I think I'll summarize this with one word. Wow! In the third and final part, I'll show you the last filter in this group which solves a common problem when doing a perspective corner pink tracking. Until then, I'll leave you with a quote I once heard in a Photoshop lecture. When in doubt, add a drop shadow. This is Eran Stern for CreativeCow.net saying goodbye.